Hello there, welcome to Hume DIY. I'm your host Chris, and today we're talking a little bit about how to start a profitable handyman business. Now, I just started my handyman business, so I thought it'd be helpful to give a few tips that I've learned and it might help you start your business and start making money pretty fast. Now, before we jump into it, if you ever have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. So, without further ado, let's jump into some of these tips. The first thing that you need to know about a handyman business, well, even before that, is what are you going to offer? What skills do you have? What work have you done previously? And what can you offer clients? For me, before I even started to think about running a handyman business, I started to do work in my own home. I did some painting, changed out some electrical switches, I fixed faucets, I did a bigger project renovating a bathroom, and some other small things like hanging up shelves and changing doorknobs, stuff like that. And so, before I even thought about this, I was already doing work on my own house, and I had barely done some work on previous, like, homes. My experience was from my own housework. If you have no experience, find somewhere where you can get experience. Either do some work on your own house or apartment, if you can, if that's allowed or whatever. If you can't do it there, find someone who has a house and help them out or find someone who is a handyman and learn from them. And so try to learn and get some experience before you even start about starting a handyman business. Well, if you're watching this video, you probably already at that point of wanting to start a handyman business and what goes into it. So obviously, if you're gonna run a business, you need clients, so you need to book your first client. The way that I went about this process is after I've been working on my home for a while, I wanted to explore the possibility of starting a business, so I started posting on Instagram and made this YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. And kind of went from there and just started showing like, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is the projects I'm working on, I'm working on more projects on my house, and I'm just having fun with it, you know, learning and growing and trying to increase the value of my home which a lot of you know YouTubers talk about in real estate, like you can increase the value of your home by working on it yourself. As long as you're not screwing stuff up, of course. Make sure you hire the right people for the right job and you can do the work that you don't need to hire out. People in my sphere saw me posting on Instagram, following my DIY account, and just started to talk to me about this DIY stuff in person, at church, and you know, hanging out, whatever, my family. And so it was just kind of like this natural process of this is what I'm doing, not trying to sell anything. Eventually, a friend had posted that they needed some work done on their office space. And so my wife actually saw this and responded and was like, Chris would probably do it. Uh, and so we actually went to the doctors and I didn't know anything about it. And he was like, hey, you interested in doing this? And I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about, but yeah, let's do it. And so we just started talking about it, uh, started to get a game plan together, and then we agreed to the work that was going to be done for this back office. And so just like that, a friend hired me for my first handyman job. It was pretty chill, honestly. He, I guess, trusted me to a certain level to do this work, and I did a good job. And he's happy, and he actually has hired me for another job and possibly another job. Uh, for the same office, but, you know, fixing up some other stuff. And so that was actually a bigger task than probably a lot of first handyman jobs. On the other side, I'm also doing the task rabbit thing, where that pays, like, terribly, but just to get to more experience, get connections, and to start growing in that sphere in order to, you know, bridge the gap between booking other clients and booking these low and hanging fruit kind of jobs. And so that is where you can start. You can start with friends, you can start with family, anyone you might know that might need some work done, even if it's s simple things like changing a door handle or painting or filling in holes in sheetrock or anything that you can think of that's like, hey, I saw that you uh, have a hole in your wall, like, can I help you fix it? And I'll do it for free uh, or I'll do it for, you know, 20 bucks. Whatever. You can just start talking to your friends and family and see if they have any work done for you. That's a great place to start. And then, after 
you have some experience and maybe you're doing some work for your friends, how do you reach out and go even further than that? I'm not entirely sure. That's something I'm still figuring out for my handyman business. I have not advertised anything yet, but it's just been through connections through my network that I've started to book some gigs and of course, like I said, doing the TaskRabbit gig. So that is something I am still figuring out and working through. I can imagine just like any other business, getting connections to connections leads to more connections and booking the clients through that way. Now, I am not specifically advertising as like, I do this one thing right now. I'm just being like, I can do a lot of things, which, you know, is a handyman. Uh, of course, some things I won't do, but a lot of people are looking for work that any handyman can do. If it's something major like electrical or plumbing, then, you know, pass that on to the professionals and let me do the other stuff. And so the way that I've started my handyman business has been through word of mouth, it's been through family, it's been through friends, it's been through just doing stuff on my own house, working, experimenting, having fun with it honestly, and then letting it grow from there. This hasn't been like an overnight success where one day I'm not a handman and the next day I am and I'm making a ton of money. Like I'm hardly making money right now, but I'm starting to book more clients, get more gigs, and make that money. If that's you, you're looking for a way to get in and start your handyman business. Just go out there, do some networking, find those jobs, and do a good job when you get the job. Because if you do a good job, they will either book you for more work at their house, or they will refer you to your friends. A bonus tip here is to get some cards made, like some business cards, so you can give it to them and they can you know, put it on their fridge, maybe get a fridge sticker, maybe a coaster, whatever. Uh, just let them know that you're available and tell them to reach out to you. And if their friends have anything, just tell them to reach out. And that's about it. I know that's not the most super detailed business plan format for starting a handyman business. Uh, it's more organic in my explanation and just how it happened for me. And I think that's just how a lot of service work goes. You offer your service and people hire you and then those people hire you again or get their friends to hire you and whatever. If I need to run ads in the future, I will probably make a video about it and see how that works. But otherwise, I'm just gonna keep going with the connections and take what's given to me. That is about it for this video on how to start your handyman business and how to even get started being a handyman. So thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments how you started your business uh, or any tips, honestly, that you have. If you have been doing this for 20, 30 years, I'd love to hear it and I'd love to just chat. And so make sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I will see y'all out there. Goodbye.